Hello everyone, my name is Roger Stromkowski and I am a solutions engineer here at SnapLogic. Today we're going to do a video on how to download pipeline results from API as a CSV file. In this video we'll take a look at the pipeline design overview. We'll take a look at the triggered task used to create the URL and bearer token. We'll take a look at the curl request made against the API. And a note on this bullet point three, this is where you could fit in your own API calling our API. This is where you could fit in a mobile application, a scripting language, anything that can make an HTTP get request and process the body, especially save it as a file. We'll take a look at the execution of the pipeline in the dashboard. So we know that it, how to find it in the dashboard, verify that it ran. And then we'll take a look at the resulting file. So starting here in the SnapLogic Designer tab, uh, what we have here is a very simple two-snap pipeline. And the key piece is this, so we have no open input on our Salesforce read. This is how we know that this is going to be a GET request in terms of SnapLogic. If it did have an open input request, then the SnapLogic API would be expecting a POST request. So this is going to be a GET, and we do have an unlinked output view here, binary, at the end of our CSV formatter. So this is how the body, the response body, will be generated. So let's start with our Salesforce read snap. So I'm going to be looking at the account object type. Uh, I have changed the service version. And I've defined some output fields that I wish to capture. And other than that, everything else in the snap has been left to default values. In the CSV formatter snap, I have everything left to default values. And then I do just want to make a call out that we have our CSV header in this case. Now, so normally in the designer, your tools would be shortened like this. So we just want to make sure this is expanded so that we can see the create task icon. And when this wizard comes up, we're going to see a few things. Uh, first, the name of my pipeline is going to be right here. And we're actually just going to append task to the name of the task. The snaplex chosen to run the pipeline will be the same as what was chosen here to run the manual iterations in designer. Run policy will default to trigger, which is exactly what we want in this case, because that's what's going to allow us to have a URL and a bearer token. Uh, these are the other policies that are available when creating tasks. For my scenario, I'm not going to define a timeout, and I'm not going to define any notifications. But this notifications field is a comma-separated list of any users that you wish to be notified of issues with the pipe, the task. Uh, so this could be your DevOps team, your support team, the architect of the pipeline, any of those. I'm not debugging this, so we don't need to worry about checking this one. And then since this is a download API that we're trying to set up here, I don't want to block multiple requests, so I'm going to leave this unchecked. Now, I'm not going to hit create here because I've already created the task. So let me just pop over to the manager tab real quick and show that to you. Uh, if I just click on the name of the task right there, just left click on the name, you'll see the identical window pop up uh, with the fields, including the actual bearer token for my pipeline. So you can see I haven't changed anything else here. It looks the same as what we were just talking about. So let me close this and show you the next most important thing about the triggered task. And that is at the far right of the name, we've got a down arrow that pops up. And I'm going to hit that and do details. Now when this pops up, uh, we can see that we have the URL, the cloud URL, and this is what I'm going to call to download the file. My bear token again is here, and I could execute this here, but I'm actually going to show you from a curl uh, scenario so we can see what it would look like from outside of SnapLogic. Uh, if you were running this on-premise on a groundplex, you would have the ability to do on-premise secure or HTTP. Uh, you could also have a load balancer set up and mask these in some other ways. You can call them with your own certificates and things like that. So let me go ahead and park myself in the designer for now. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull up my terminal window. And we're going to take a look. I've created the API request as a uh, script for myself here for simplicity for this demo. So what we can see here is we have a curl statement being made to the cloudplex UR, to the cloud URL. We're passing in the bare header token. We're passing in another token, uh, sorry, another header except text CSV. And the output file, the small lowercase o here, is going to be for demo csv.csv. So this is going to determine how we save the response body as a file. 
So let's pop over here. So this is where I'm set up to go ahead and run this. Oh, sorry, one more thing before I do that is I'll just open up my Finder and show you that I, in my desktop I have the script, but I don't have the file. So now let's run this, and we can see when the file is complete and comes in. Okay, so here it is. Uh, we've got a 64 KB file. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. So here we go. We can see we have those fields that I had set, and the data is here in a CSV file. Our last pit, the last part of this demonstration then is to go back into the dashboard and take a look at the request that we made. Uh, so you can see here I have been testing here. This tells me that this icon here tells me that it was a triggered task. I can actually click this to go right to the task. Uh, but more importantly, we can see what node my pipeline ran on when it was called. We can see that it was completed. We can see how many documents were returned, how long it took to execute, when it was called. And then if you were interested in the logs of the pipeline, you can click this little icon in the status column and it will pull the logs for that execution time.